mark 100 millimeters around the roof perimeter as a guide to transfer from WBA to the perimeter band of bonding adhesive. If using bonding adhesive as the deck adhesive, this is not required. In this instance, the roof can be done in one piece, and this is typical of many freestanding buildings such as garages. The membrane should be laid out, allowing it to overhang the edges of the building. 75mm all round is normal, but this can be adjusted to suit site requirements. Allow the membrane to relax prior to bonding to the deck. Typically, half an hour is sufficient, but this will vary depending on the ambient conditions. When the membrane has been given adequate time to relax, draw it back to the centre point and apply the water-based adhesive to the deck. For non-timber deck surfaces, this should be carried out using the bonding adhesive, which is applied to both the deck and the underside of the membrane. Do not allow WBA adhesive to tack off. Lay the membrane into the adhesive while it is still wet. The adhesive must transfer to the underside of the membrane. This can be carried out in stages if required to ensure this is achieved. Many classic bond membranes have a dusting of talc to make installation and handling easier. Once the membrane has been laid into the adhesive, it can be broomed into position to remove any air and ensure positive contact to the adhesive beneath. Once this has been completed, it can be repeated for the opposite side of the roof. Draw the membrane back to the centre point again, apply the adhesive to the deck area and lay in the membrane as before. If using WBA, the next stage is to apply the bonding adhesive to the roof perimeter that has been kept free from WBA. By working on opposite sides of the roof, you are able to ensure the work is carried out with maximum efficiency and complete projects quickly. Bonding adhesive must be applied to both the deck and the underside of the membrane. Bonding adhesive must be allowed to tack off before the surfaces are put together. This allows solvents to escape and ensures it does not cause the membrane to blister. If blistering does occur as a result of this, it is likely to be temporary. When the membrane installation is complete, the shore edge PVC trims can be fixed into position. These finish the roof neatly and provide additional securement for the membrane at the roof perimeter. The shore edge gutter trim front plate is nailed into position using the supplied polytop nails through the pre-drilled fixing holes. This provides the installer with preset centers for the fixings and ensures the gutter edge is fixed securely and neatly. The pre-applied foam strip forms a watertight seal under compression and ensures water flows over the top of the trim. Trim off the excess membrane from the gutter edge. If stapling the membrane at the corners, ensure the staples are always weathered prior to installing the shore edge check curb. Shore edge check curbs can be installed to any edge where there is no gutter. The membrane should be trimmed back, allowing a minimum of 50 millimeters overhanging the roof edge. By compressing the pre-applied foam strip between 30 and 50%, a watertight seal is achieved. As with the gutter trim, these are nailed into position using the supplied polytop nails through the pre-drilled fixing holes. All shore edge PVC trims require an expansion gap of one millimeter per meter of run between lengths of trim. The final step to complete the roof is to attach the corners and joining clips. A plastic adhesive applied to one side accommodates any movement and is used to complete this. For projects in excess of 100 square meters, 
reinforced universal securement strip, commonly called RUS, should be applied to every roof perimeter and bonding adhesive used for the deck adhesive. Please consult your distributor for more information on larger scale installations.